Hello, everyone. I'm responsible on the for the pyro uh, tool development uh, side of things. So doing the pyro pipelining and developing all the kind of cool looking like explosion. So um, this presentation, um, I just do kind of do the experimentation I did recently about the uh, about our fire tool. Uh, this is like tip 8.5, we uh, changed a lot uh, about Pyro and how do you work with Pyro, but mainly we were always concentrating on uh, explosions. And therefore, I think it was kind of uh, high time to, um, you know, uh, give you guys more examples for uh, fire. Um, even though these ones did not make it to the current release now, but, uh, but all of these examples I'm going to walk through will make it to the content library uh, very soon. Um, so, um, what, what, what was the aim of, uh, of doing these examples? So, basically, uh, when uh, we doing fire, um, and I'm pretty sure most of you are experienced with, you know, working in production and, and like doing shots and fire, is that the fire is just um, generically looking like one color. What I mean is that is like most of my work uh, at ILM, for, for example, would just contain uh, a fire simulation like this, um, uh, which basically all it contains is like a, a density field and the temperature field simulated and the temperature is just mapped to this orange color and where uh, the temperature is high, let's say at the bottom of the fire, uh, then it's also bright uh, yellow orange. And then as the fire uh, temperature fades up, it turns into um, you know, more darker orange and then black. Uh, and, and this is fine for most of the production scenarios and most of the shots, it's, it's more than fine and it's a very quick way to just produce shot after shot. But what I wanted to spend uh, a bit of more time with is, uh, well, can we make it more uh, realistic? Um, and, and basically looking at, you know, references and, uh, uh, you know, what makes a fire sexy. Uh, you know, you can find, you know, plenty of like uh, references online and what, what you would find, let's say right away probably is like, you know, candle fire and, and like match uh, fire, where you see that you got this uh, non-luminance uh, uh, part of the fire where it's, uh, you know, first kind of transparent sort of, and then uh, goes into this more, you know, uh, uh, yellow, uh, illum uh, like yellow part where it's like amidst the light. Um, and then this is, you can also kind of, um, uh, see the similar um, um, kind of behavior on, on not just like candle fire, but also on bonfire and so on. So, so all of these areas here kind of follow like a similar pattern. And, uh, uh, you know, again, this is more close up and, um, and kind of mid-range fire. Again, for, uh, for whenever I would have to work on a you know, fire like far in the distance, I would probably not bother with this. Um, and then just a couple of more examples. So in, in these examples, I'm mainly like largely concentrating more on this, like creating this transparent look and the setup for it. Uh, but I also found this uh, picture very interesting uh, because it also shows not just that kind of like property, but uh, also the fact that, that the, the flame is rather smooth and as soon as it turns to kind of black smoke, you will get uh, a much more turbulent behavior immediately. So these are kind of the interesting features that um, I, I also try to, to tackle and, and see what, what we can you know, do to achieve that kind of look. Um, and this is just again, one more example, as I said, like around mid distance when uh, you, you kind of also can see this kind of more transparent behavior in certain areas. Um, and uh, then, yeah, let's see what we can do in Houdini. So, uh, 
so as I said, this is this would be basically the the default setup as I would start with, um, and uh, what we um, what we're gonna use is basically ramps to modify uh, the color. Uh, one thing we did in 18.5 is that we we moved away from the physical black body, which I kind of consider as my enemy. So I generally don't use that, and I never used it for any. Uh, like I could not get any nice results out of it, basically. And uh, and for example, this is like the same simulation uh, shaded with black body here. Um, again, it's hard to control. And and again, one of the thing is I don't have a way to control the transparent bottom area where the source is. So this is basically out of the question uh, to use. So uh, then going on, so I will be going through like uh, multiple setups then, uh, and each setup is more complex and builds on top of the previous one. Um, uh, so this is what, what this Houdini SIM file contains actually. And to start with the very basic setup, um, I just use a, a sphere um, and just a very generic, uh, you know, simulation. Um, which um, to get the more candly kind of uh, look, uh, I have to make the flame more viscous. So this will give this nice smoother kind of look to it. Um, and well, this is the result. So this is, this is very simple, but it's a, it's a good start. Uh, this is how basically I started. Uh, now what, what generally, if, if you would have this task to do a candle fire, um, Generally, the thing you would do is you would do uh, some sort of a post-processing whereby, uh, and I have a volume bulb here, uh, and then the visualization, whereby you map the transparent ramp, which I have uh, just here. You would ramp this based on the, uh, the y-axis. And, and basically, this works for most cases, but it's very um, specific. It's it's only works for sorry. So it's only works for candle and all the things which are like going up vertical, basically, or whichever axis you choose to uh, uh, apply the the ramp on. Uh, so while this like told me that yeah, the the like having something a ramp like which goes from black to some other color that's that's gonna work, but but this solution is not or this method is not really a solution to, to create something that is, um, you know, very much uh, generic, which we want to aim for. So, so after taking this, the, the next step was to create um, this example, which is, I just called smoke class flame. So um, in this example, I just take in a, a circle, um, create a, a very basic source with burn and temperature. So this is basically like the very generic setup how you would start a simple fire simulation and then just adding some uh, 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 noise um, and I should be able to visualize it. So it just animated over time. So this is to kind of help you know, in fire, you would uh, in this type of fires, you would notice all the os os oscillation that would happen with the flame. So this is a very good like way to to have that kind of behavior. Um, then basically, um, just um, I have to hide the velocity. So I'm just applying noise again uh, on the burn and the temperature, um, and I can just click on the temperature. So just very basic noise. Uh, so there is nothing complicated here and then just converting it to volume. And again, a very generic pyro uh, setup where I don't do anything fancy. So this is like basically the basic setup you would get from the bonfire setup. And uh, more interested in the loop tab. So if I go down here, um, from now on I try to make, make this a bit bigger. So basically what you would get out is the, the example uh, I was already showing you. So, so bright orange at the bottom. 
then the next step was, so what can I do to make it actually better? So the next thing is to actually um, reverse the ramp. So black goes on the right side, uh, orange on the left side. So, right, so this is very simple. So basically I'm saying that wherever the, um, the, the flame, and here I'm working with the flame field, wherever the flame field is, uh, you know, uh, a large value like one, then it's gonna be black. So the opposite actually, and the result is basically this. Uh, so this does not really still look like what I would intend to do. So, so there's still, you know, something else to, to go and change. Um, so one, one of the things which I did and I realized that would, would help um, creating this transparent area is that uh, uh, in the field, um, create sort of uh, a temperature diffusion. So this is without temperature diffusion. So you can see all of these artifacts there um, as the, the you know, flame is simulated. Um, and uh, the reason for this, and I have to go back to the, to the look tab, it's, um, it's because if I go back to the, oh, sorry, I do not want to simulate it. Actually, I zebra, yes. So in this first case, we map flame to flame and, and uh, basically all of these black areas, um, uh, like, like we, all of these artifacts are like pretty bad. We get this when we have the same field, no temperature diffusion. And then even though uh, here I change it to flame temperature, I'm still getting well, somewhat more transparent, but I still get the artifacts. And then uh, the next way, way which I tried, which already improved a lot, you can see that those artifacts are, well, it kind of changed. So I don't have this long, long, large, you know, artifacts area, but I have this small, smaller contained area, but I can already see some areas which are much more clearer in here. So, so adding um, temperature diffusion, um, uh, sorry, um, yeah, temperature diffusion right here to increase that definitely helps on the look. But still, uh, there is something missing because, again, I have this like artifact here around the edges of the simulation right where the source is. So this is still, still not really enough. So as a next step, um, what I tried it to do is, um, well, considering that uh, this is coming from the sourcing, so the idea is that, uh, and I just have to jump back here, so what is important again, which I mentioned it, as I change the fire color RAM field, so the source which is uh, maps this ramp is the temperature, uh, that means that I can maybe source my temperature in a much bigger radius. That means that the temperature will completely en encompass the, the flame field basically. So as soon as I'm doing that, so uh, as soon as I did that, I immediately can get rid of all the artifacts at the bottom and I'm getting all of this like nice transparent areas which nicely fades into the flame. So basically to achieve this then, as I said, uh, here the sourcing is much more complex actually now. Well, it's still simple, but unfortunately I had to like split out two uh, sides here. So uh, on one side I have the, again, the velocity noise and I only doing the burn here. And on the other side, what I'm doing is for the temperature, I'm multiplying the p-scale with quite a lot. Uh, and then the same thing, adding the temperature noise, but I also additionally uh, jitter uh, the source. So in the end, uh, I'm ending up uh, you know, with this kind of source for the temperature, 
and this kind of source for um, the burn field, which effectively will be uh, our flame field as soon as it's sourced in. Um, and um, we are just just so that if uh, you're not familiar, so um, I have this name note here because we ha we can use a source name attribute which tells exactly which point should be used for uh, which uh, um, volume rasterization. So I'm using that attributes to tell that all of these points should only contribute to burn and velocity, and this branch, all of these points on this branch should only contribute to temperature, and I can rasterize them all together with one node instead of two separate uh, volume rasterizations. And as I mentioned, th there, is, uh, uh, there is no change whatsoever on the pyro simulation. So all the settings are the same. Uh, one thing I also applied previously is the substep. So this is, I did have to increase it. Generally, I don't like to increase it. And the, the last thing I do is like uh, reaching for the sub steps and increasing that, but in this case, I do kind of had to increase it to also help uh, the kind of smooth less and reduce the artifact. But that uh, I believe I also already applied here as well. So that's, uh, as I said, no different from any of the previous tries I did. So it's really just the sourcing basically, and and immediately I can get uh, uh, this kind of look. Um, and and just to show you uh, separately, so I have the flame field here visualized, and then I have the temperature field, which you see that it's a much larger area uh, to completely engulf the the flame. And I just did like an, a small test here to show. So the, I have the flame field here, which I just converted to an SDF, and I have a temperature field here, and as soon as I subtract the two, this is what I should be seeing, that, that I get a completely nice and clean, uh, uh, you know, area where uh, I can clearly separate from one to another. And this is, basically shown in uh, the uh, video, which is uh, this one. So this is this fire rendered, basically. Oh, that's not mine. So, so this is basically one, um, one fire that it's it's pretty okay. Like like this this does its thing. Um, it looks nice. It can be also already used for candle fire or or any sort of basic fire. But there are a couple of things with it where we can still improve. So so one of the things and and again I'm building these setups from just taking the previously built setup and building on top of it. So again, you see the same, same setup here, which I did. The only thing in this one is that um, I want to emit uh, smoke from this. And that's where I'm running into problems. So, and namely the problem is that, that uh, I would try to emit smoke from the sourcing. So you can see here, I just picked the burn field. I could have picked temperature, whatever, or any other custom field. I just source it as density. And the problem is that this is sourced in the area on this non-luminance uh, uh, area where I want it to be transparent, but now it's covered with black smoke. So this is kind of, big problem now because all of the work I've done is now pretty much gone. So that kind of means that, well, uh, can I not now apply smoke to this kind of setup? And, and you would think that, yeah, you can then maybe do some post-processing tricks. So for example, here I just created a, a basic wrangle with some uh, min and max range and, uh, and scale, um, ramp 
to kind of try to remove that kind of smoke. But then it kind of, you know, starting to remove smoke from the areas where I want to, while still where I actually want smoke and keep the, you know, area here uh, still where I actually want the smoke to be removed. So this is not really an option uh, to do. Then the, the, the second thing uh, which I kind of like, you know, realize with this whole setup is um, the, the temperature control. So, so basically I'm creating this, uh, like I'm controlling this, this uh, orange ramp uh, with the temperature field. Uh, but that also means that the temperature is is bound to you know all this buoyancy and forces like like basically um, I might not necessarily wanna tie the the color of the ramp or this how this ramp fade up to the way I want you know temperature to behave in my simulation. So I sort of somehow, I want to kind of decouple this. Like I don't want my temperature uh, to control this, uh, you know, fading uh, color ramp basically. So as the as next thing um, to tackle this problem, um, I uh, kind of have to use some clever tricks and and just to show you, so all, all of these simulations so far did not use any sort of, uh, uh, you know, dock nodes inside. Uh, it, this is all just done by basically what, what, what you can do with the basic solver. Uh, no other nodes ne were necessary. And this is the, to solve this kind of smoke issue, this is the, the part where I actually have to dive in and create a, uh, uh, sort of a setup that would allow me to do exactly this. So as I said, um, I want to avoid temperature, uh, to use the temperature wheel. I simply want temperature to drive, you know, the, you know, how fast, how far the, the flame goes up, but I do not want to co control the actual, like, you know, this nice color ramp with it. Um, and what I did first is I, I'm basically then sourcing new fields into the simulation. So I'm sourcing a fuel field and I'm sourcing something called fuel mask, which was my temperature. And, and the question why I'm using fuel here, it's basically because, um, well, it's not really fuel, but um, we had something like a fuel before some versions ago and I kind of wanted to repurpose that name because it, this is kind of what starts up the simulation, uh, but there is actually no other sort of um, you know, similarity between actual being an actual real like fuel. fuel. But, but fuel, fuel max then, or the, the max part kind of makes sense here because as you saw, as you seen with temperature, this is the kind of mask field that is kind of encapsulating my fuel field or what was my burn effectively flame field in the previous simulations. So therefore it's just fuel and fuel mask map. And I'm doing the same rasterization. And, and the basic idea is here is, and if I dive inside, uh, it's not as complicated, it just, I also created a separate branch to also solve it with the minimal solver. Uh, so every node has an OpenCL equivalent here. Um, so basically I want to source separately fuel and fuel mass. So these are the fields which um, my pyro solver does not know anything about it. So in that case you have to kind of do a couple of things. And one of the things is, for example, to define those fields in the extra field, sorry, in the extra field step here. So as you can see it, these are all uh, specified here. Um, then the other important thing is in the advection, you, in this case, these two fields, I also want them to be advected by the simulation because I kind of want the fuel field to behave as my, f as the fuel should behave as my flame field in my previous examples, and the fuel mask should behave as my temperature. 
And these are the basically the things you have to do on the solver when you want to do your custom field. And inside the, the solver, um, well, so not to jump ahead, what you also have to do, of course, is to specify, and I say that the fuel goes to fuel and fuel mask goes to fuel mask on the sourcing tab here. But as soon as you've done that, um, um, I basically just have a gas match field. So this makes sure that the fuel, my fuel field always matched uh, to the temperature field. So it gets the properties of the, the temperature field. So it's gonna be a scalar field, same as the temperature. This is what I'm mostly concerned about. And, and as I said, so I want my fuel field to behave as my flame field. So I apply the same um, dissipation to it. So, um, and basically how do I get to this node and how do I dissipate the node then if I have a custom field to dissipate? Well, uh, we have a gas dissipate node, but this is kind of abandoned. So this is like, it's a, it's a bit old and it's like, I don't use it. Um, this should deserve a, a rewrite um, because it's also a bit difficult to like, like find your way around to control the way you want to control it. So basically what I did here, and here I, at the moment I cannot offer any uh, better uh, solution for this, but basically uh, I just, what I did is I just, uh, you know, dive inside the pyro solver uh, and uh, if I see here flame wax. So basically this, I find the node which is responsible for, uh, you know, cooling the flame to dissipate the flame. And I literally just copied this node out and this is how it looks inside. Uh, but in my version, um, I pruned all the nodes which are not necessary. So I only kept the part which is responsible for cooling or dissipation. So this is kind of an ugly um, method, but, uh, but these kind of things and experiments also kind of makes us realize on the things that we have to improve, for example. And, and one of the thing is that, uh, yes, we do need a, a sort of a, a global, a generic dissipation node that uh, actually up to the standards that is placed into our pyro solver and also that uh, anyone can just place it down and use it. So, and then the other note here is, as I said, I did an OpenCL version of it. So this again, taken from the same dissipate CL node, and then I just kept the part here, which is responsible for, uh, for doing the dissipation in OpenCL. And basically what I ended up here is basically my own custom flame field. It, it cannot do all the nice tricky bits like emitting smoke and stuff, which is like part of the solver, but it kind of behaves one. Like I'm just sourcing in the, the same field as I was sourcing into before the flame and I'm dissipating it just the same way as the flame dissipates. Then uh, as a second thing, um, uh, the fuel mask, which was again my temperature. So, so I'm doing the same thing. So I want to make sure that my fuel mask is similarly a scalar field as my temperature. And the next thing is what, what, what's happening with my temperature in the previous example is that, uh, um, is that I was, uh, well, actually I better show it there to, to see it. Um, so fields, temperature. So I was both using diffusion, which I talked about, and uh, the cooling rate as well. So basically, again, for this field, I have to implement the, the, the same settings. So basically, again, my solution here was, again, unfortunately, just had to dive inside the node. Uh, and uh, I believe this should be in the smoke solver. Uh, so, and then find the, the temperature part where the temperature diffusion and cooling takes place. And I basically just uh, copied this, these two nodes out. Um, 
and there we go. Here we have the same gas blur and gas linear combination um, to blur and uh, dissipate uh, my fuel mass. So basically, I'm ending up with my own field, which kind of behaves like flame, and my own mask field, which kind of behaves like uh, uh, you know temperature. Then. Then this is where it gets uh, more interesting now that I have all of these basics made, uh, because you know as previously uh, the this transparent part was only coming from the ramp, but now what I kind of have to do is to bring this ramp and do this kind of transparent separation inside the solver, so. Uh, instead of relying on simply this this ramp to do that as a as kind of visual just a visual feedback, I actually have to kind of um, well do it manually inside. So basically, what I'm doing is taking the uh, I make it bigger. I'm taking uh, uh, the fuel mask and I remap it between control min and control mask using the ramp. I'm basically remapping it and using that value to multiply it with my fuel. And that will, that the result of that is basically what I would get visually when I apply this ramp um, to the flame uh, in my previous setups. But now it's actually happening inside where I'm actually getting an actual field, getting that exact behavior. And, and therefore, I put this into the flame field. And, and that's a bit like, you know, uh, not very uh, common way to do it. But basically what I'm doing now, I'm overwriting the flame field with this frame with this with this calculated field every frame so my flame field is not the the flame field that um, you would source and then it gets simulated but I'm always overwriting it on every frame and basically with this method what I'm ending up with is is this is the fuel mask which is again in the previous example this this was my burn and flame then I have the fuel mask, which is just happening on the bottom part. And now you see what I meant by doing it inside that I'm actually getting this as a volume rather than just kind of visualizing it. And then flame is this part. So this is I'm every frame I'm overwriting it. And this is what I get. And this is exactly what I wanted to achieve because that means that now my flame is completely separate from, from the fuel mass, from the bottom part, which I want to be transparent. And that means that I can take this flame and just simply emit density from it. So this is the same thing as you would do anyway. So if I go to fields and you go density and just simply emit density from flame, Again, the only thing is flame is now overwritten by my customly calculated field. And in this particular uh, solver, I basically just log the flame field here, kind of showing that or indicating that these controls do not affect the simulation anymore because, because the flame is again overwritten. And I just promoted um, some of the parameters to control uh, the uh, the creation of these flame field basically so the fuel lifespan is basically responsible for what was my what is my flame lifespan basically so this is this is takes effect on the on the flame field and then mass fuel is just basically I'm enabling the uh, the operation on the the fuel mask field which then again gets blurred. Uh, it has uh, a cooling rate, and then basically I'm just ramp like just ramping it between a min and max value to actually uh, control 
this area, this part of the simulation, effectively making the transparent area larger or smaller. And, uh, and basically this is just like two different uh, version of, uh, of just using the pyrobake volume to, to shade them differently. Um, and then I'm basically just using the fuel and the fuel mask to kind of color uh, uh, my fire, uh, but using the same, same rem basically. Uh, additionally, while well, actually adding some kind of bluish tint here so that uh, uh, I can get this nice effect in here. Um, and then if I kind of show this one, then then this is uh, this uh, example which I rendered, so smoke with flame. And I did another variation of this. Um, which is it's just a bit reduced. I mean, the previous one, it's like too saturated, too unrealistic, and this is just like one, yeah, this is a bit too much, and the other one is just a, a bit better, and just set the um, the ramp and stuff a, a bit differently just to experiment. And uh, well, this is, sorry, this is the previous one. So, So after this, basically, we now have like two setups. So we got one setup which uh, only does, you know, just the flame and no smoke. And then we got a different setup, which is like also able to simulate, you know, smoke on top of the flame. So these are all, you know, could be separate, you know, examples files for our content library. So, and, and, because of that, the next step is I was trying to, you know, see how these setups would work in, uh, you know, in a more, uh, you know, in other scenarios. And the 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 first scenario scenario I tried was basically um, uh, this uh, torch uh, fire. Um, and here I'm just basically using a ramp, uh, so, not a ramp, sorry, a sphere um, instead of a of torch geometry just for simplicity. Um, so taking basically exactly the same principles, uh, the same setup, uh, only thing is I just had to modify the um, kind of sourcing uh, for this uh, flame. So, and if I just, um, Display it. Yeah, right here. So, so when it comes to sourcing, um, I, I use the same concept. So I have the fuel here on this side, and on this side I have uh, uh, my fuel mask, which I scale by 1.5 in this case, um, but and, and then merging them and volume rasterizing them. So this is basically the same, same principle. And then the simulation settings and creating the custom fields is exactly the same. The, the challenge where I kind of run into in, in a torch fire case is basically looking at references with torch fires, what I would notice is that um, Usually all of these fires have like a strong wind where you got the torch and then the flame is just blown to one side. And what you would notice is that even though that there is a strong wind blowing the flame this way, uh, on the wind side you still get uh, the flame to kind of create shapes and kind of still build up some sort of like shapes, some flames that then like goes around and slide around the whole torch because they picked up by the wind and then uh, uh, and then just kind of builds up into the big big you know torch flame and that's a bit of a challenge to do because basically what happens is as soon as you you source something and you have the strong wind what happens is basically um, immediately you source it, but you immediately like move it in the direction of the wind. Effectively, you're leaving no chance for uh, 
for any sort of detail to develop on the wind side of the torch. Um, and, and this is a pretty big challenge, which uh, what I came up with solution working, it works for this example. And I'm not saying this is a, a generic example and still, you know, um, certainly it's a, more of a hack, but at least it's a good starting point where I could get some sort of nice results that I was happy with. Um, and uh, the end results you can see uh, in, in this video where I can get some nice detail building up on, uh, on this side and then joining in to the, to the core of the flame here. So what I had to do for this is, um, is I created uh, yet another uh, field, which I just called uh, source mask. And this is basically um, nothing more than just um, the, the source geometry kind of just picked out a bit so it's enlarged and I'm converting it to just a simple fog VDB. And one important thing before I just dive into the solver, after some experimenting, I kind of also had to reduce the collision uh, uh, geometry. So this, this part, this is actually the collision distance field. So this is used for collision, and here I just had to reduce it. Um, and simply the way I figured this out is just by experimenting, and I just got you know, better results by reducing it. But going back to the, the source mass, the source mass is clearly much larger than the, uh, than the original uh, source, as you can see. So what I did here, it's again, as I said, it's a bit of hacking. Um, and what I did is going to the shape tab and uh, I applied a very strong Turbulence. So the basic idea here is, is that I apply a very strong turbulence just inside this area where I have this source mask. So this, tur this strong turbulence only going to take effect inside this area, um, therefore limiting it only here. And just doing that with a simple turbulence node will again not really work because um, I, for example, in my case, I could not really balance it between uh, making it strong enough that it's kind of overrides the strength of the wind I needed um, versus creating something that looks good. So what I did is, um, as, well, unfortunately here I had to go and edit the, the pyro solver and the turbulence node inside, but what I did instead is, uh, it's basically uh, the way we add forces to the, to the solver is that we cal calculate the force, the, the value of the force, and it's an add operation to add it to the current velocity field. But instead here, I did the very much, you know, not, ve not very often advised method of simply just overwriting the velocity frame on every frame in that area. So where my source mask is, I'm just simply overwriting my velocity field with the cal calculated turbulence. And again, this is not um, a standard way to do it, but in this example, as you saw, it kind of gave me the results that I needed. And, and other than that, uh, there were no um, you know, other changes done to, uh, uh, to this whole, uh, fuel and fuel mass setup. So these are all, all basically the same. Um, and there is one other thing which kind of just shows the reason why I again had to kind of edit our turbulence node is, um, is if you remember in the slide, uh, I wanted to create this effect for this example where I have this broader, larger kind of shapes of the flame, and then the smoke turns uh, into um, you know this more turbulent, violent kind of 
has this behavior. And unfortunately, uh, the current turbulent node is not um, uh, very capable of doing it. So the reason is because, well, we have control field and we have threshold fields for, for turbulence nodes. And uh, if I display it, basically what I want to edit I, or what I want to say is that wherever uh, my, my density is large, like where the value is one here, I want strong turbulence, which is clear. Like th that's kind of very, very like, like normal approach to this. But wh what I also want to say, I want to apply this turbulence in the area where my, um, where uh, this, uh, let's say, you can use either um, um, th the temperature field or, or our calculated flame, flame field, where that calculated flame field is less than like, you know, zero point whatever, like very low. So only, only where, you know, the smoke develops right here. So you wanna kinda apply the turbulence only on this area. But the problem is that our turbulence node are uh, sort of hard coded in a way that the influence threshold, which is which would define me, would I would use to say, okay, everywhere where the flame is lower than this, this influence threshold is hard coded to say everywhere where it's larger, unfortunately. So this way, what if it would be a, a normal like a gas turbulence node that is not edited? I would apply turbulence where the flame is larger and I would have no control over it. And that's a problem because, because as you can see here, I just want it right here where the flame is low, not here where the flame is high. And, and therefore this is the other edit I had to do and diving inside one more last time. Um, and the gas turbulence node inside here, I basically just, with this compare node, I just had to change it to less than. So this is one of the things I think we also have to um, change it for the next version to be able to handle this kind of, you know, situations as well. Um, and basically this is, this is how I could achieve some kind of, uh, and it's still looping, so just let me go back to this one how I can reach kind of more turbulent kind of look on the smoke side while keeping the flame side more of a like larger, broader shape. And the, the last example is the, the flaming sword. So, so this was just a, uh, like, this was basically the, a last minute setup I did before coming here to just kind of apply it on something that is moving, so not static. Um, so um, just animated uh, this uh, sword geometry and uh, generically what is, what generally I tend to do when, um, mm, but I actually might have not, yeah, I done it here. So. There is this trail up here, which just actually computes velocity, actually. So as soon as I go to, to get actually the points for the sourcing, I'm transferring the velocity attribute, which I'm calculating by that trail up, um, and, uh, and using an attribute wrangle, I kind of just very tiny bit. I'm just moving those points in the, di in the negative direction of the velocity. Uh, to kind of um, reduce the gap in between, you know, the frame steppings. Uh, and this is generally a trick I, I always tend to do when it comes to like fast moving objects, rockets, et cetera, et cetera. But then it's here, you can pretty much recognize the same network and, and pretty much exactly, uh, exactly the same uh, 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 sort of setup. Um, uh, and uh, I think, yeah, yeah. Here I just saved one uh, frame. Actually, I did not cache out the the entire thing. And when it comes to rendering, 
the way I approach all of these renderings basically is that if I have a, a, a pyro solver, we have introduced quick setups which are kind of like um, helps your work to create the needed nodes or needed you know setups what you would do next uh, after doing your simulation for example I can do a uh, create render stage and then this will just uh, uh, create an entire uh, loop network setup for me that's also uh, ready to render so basically using that method I just simply generated all of these loop nets and uh, and one of the important thing to mention um, is um, is the fact that uh, as soon as you're starting to mess with uh, separating with with uh, separating smoke and separating flame is the, the the problem is that especially in rendering side that you need um, a kind of um, and I'm just trying to uh, find the settings here, um, uh, volume sampling. So this, the volume sampling defines which is the overall volume field, which lets you define where, which tells the renderer where, is, where your volume is defined basically. And as soon as you, as I said, as, as you can see here, I separate the smoke emission from the top of the flame, but I have all of these other flames around here, then suddenly I would end up not rendering all of these areas, basically. Like I would get like just a harsh cutoff and not getting any of these area rendered because I don't have any density information and I'm telling the renderer that, hey, uh, the density is the field that that's actually responsible for uh, telling the renderer where the entire volume is exists. So because this is, you know, a problem, one of the things I, uh, I do is in these setups is that enable the flame density checkbox. So that means everywhere where I have fuel, there is a minimum amount of density as well. So that little trick is already enough to uh, trick the renderer and to realize, for the renderer to realize that yes, there is density there, therefore uh, it will render all of the, uh, the, just the flame, it render the flame components as well as the smoke part. Um, and the result of that is, um, is uh, this simulation, as uh, Fiona called it, a hamster, hamster fire because it's a bit large and... Uh, hmm? Oh, miniature, I heard hamster. Uh, <laughs> I was wondering why. Um, yeah, so that's... Uh, I might uh, close it and try to find the video here so it does not... for that uh, flaming sword. So it has its own thing. I did not have time to worry about like stepping and so on, like what you see here. And again, the scale is a bit too, too large, but it was good enough for me to kind of see the, uh, the effect and the, the, the fact that this kind of transparent uh, uh, setup is actually working on things that I that has actually animated and yes it's a bit exaggerated here and I would probably make it much lesser in this case but uh, again for presentation purposes I think it works nicely so and pretty much that's that's all I have to say about this so mm. yep yeah, so let me know if you have any any questions Anyone? No questions. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> Everything clear? Okay. Uh, no, seriously, like, uh, do we wrap this or does anyone have questions? Okay. Um, then, yeah, this present. Yeah? What was the main issue of uh, why we couldn't modify the two original fields and you had to create 
the two new ones? Um, so the one, one of the reasons was that um, I want to separate um, the the so I was controlling in the first one where I was not creating the custom field. I was using temperature uh, um, to use as the, the the ramp basically to engulf the the flame field and and use that to create this this kind of look. And the problem is that that ideally. I do not want the temperature and the temperature diffusion to control the the kind of you know the, the the look of this like transparency because for example as soon as um, uh, let's say I just go back here um, and I show the smokeless frame uh, no here. So just to display this. So as soon as I, as soon as I start to to play with cooling rate and diffusion, uh, I'm right away changing the, the 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 ramp and how the ramp is applied because you know that's again controlled by temperature, and I I kind of need to separate it because I might want my flame not to have that much. Uh, diffusion or I want my flame to go less up, like changing the cooling rate, but again, it changes the entire look of it. And I, I that's, therefore it's important to kind of separate the whole thing. And therefore I had no other option than to create, make it, make a custom field and make it behave like uh, the temperature field. So I freed my temperature field to so that I can do with the temperature for whatever I want. I can change the temperature diffusion and cooling rate, effectively changing the, the, the size of the flame without actually affecting where the transparent region gonna happen. And, and the other important part is that, um, um, again, with the density, I only want to emit density from the tip of the flame. I do not wanna emit from the bottom. And therefore, again, this is only possible if, uh, I do some sort of separation as I was showing here with fuel mask and you can see that the flame is not separated uh, and, and I just cannot do it without creating like the, these custom fields inside um, and then use that to emit the density. I don't know if this is answers the, or this is a bit more clearer than. Yeah, um, yeah, I was just wondering why um we couldn't directly modify that and bake that in, but the, the new mask makes sense. Yeah. Right, right, yeah. Anyone else? Negatory. Okay, well, uh, hopefully you guys have some tips on how to not make your fire look like red lobster, as Attila calls it. <laughs> um, and thank you for attending, and thanks, Attila.